DIY Builds in Texas. My name is Phil, your host, and Duke is around here somewhere. What I want to talk to you guys today is about putting insulation in your projects to enhance the sound and even deepen the sound and also the different types of insulation. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to be working on for the Mega Boat Box. I'll give you a little preview. So, let me tell you what I know about insulation. I'm no expert on this. I'm going to say that up front. And I'm just going to explain to you what I have found through trial and error. And I'm hoping this will help you in your future projects. Let me show you here. This is one of the first boom boxes that I built right here. And it came out really, really good. I put the speakers on the side. And that's my first chance at custom painting. And I think it came out pretty good. Now, I didn't put any insulation in the box. What I did instead was... And uh, the wire's sticking out because this one's now been taken apart. I use it for parts. But I put a base tube on here thinking that will enhance the sound. And I didn't put any insulation on here. And the speakers sounded okay. They sounded kind of high-pitched. They actually started making thumping noise sounds. And it just really didn't work. I put another base tube in here thinking, okay, maybe that will help a little bit. That didn't do anything. All I did was just make more holes in my project. And I wasn't too happy about that. So I said, okay. Not sure what to do here, so I did some experimenting, and let me show you what I, what I found was I did one of these coolers right here. This is my cooler boom box. In case you guys haven't seen the video, there's the inside of it right there, all the all the goodies and everything. And I noticed when I turned this cooler on. I didn't put any insulation on the inside or anything, just left it, you know, just like it is. I'll kind of give you a sneak peek of the inside here. You can see it, just a battery and everything. It sounded absolutely fantastic. It, 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 the, the bass was deeper, the sound was richer, and I started trying to figure out why. Then I realized that you've got about a half inch of insulation inside this cooler to keep, obviously, keep your drinks cold. And I thought, hmm, so we've got natural insulation already inside this box, and that's what seems to be making it so good, because the sound is being absorbed by the insulation on the inside of the box. So I thought, okay, let's, um, let's, let's take this idea and run with it. So let me show you what I did here. I uh, started uh, building my ammo boxes here, and what I started doing was... I started putting regular old house insulation on the inside just to see what would happen. And also the other thing I did was I quit putting the the tube on the on the outside here to make it breathe because you can see the cooler doesn't have a tube in there either. I wanted it to be waterproof. And I was just really amazed at putting that insulation in there. And I would take the insulation out and you could dramatically hear the difference in the sound. And what I can deduct from this is, with no insulation, you got all these hard surfaces in here, and the sound is coming out this way, but it's also coming out this way. And if there's nothing to absorb the sound on the inside, the sound is going to echo around and push back on your speakers. So your speakers are trying to vibrate one way, but the, the echo return is trying to make it vibrate the other way and push back on it, so it's actually fighting the speaker. So it's not going to give you a really good sound. So from what I found is putting the insulation in here, it absorbs all the sound that's coming into the box and softens it. And it just gives you a much richer, deeper sound. And it's amazing the sound you can get out of these, these little four inch speakers here. Of course, good speakers make a difference as well. I put kickers in here. It sounds really good. But those Boss Marine speakers sound really good. So I want to talk to you about two depths of insulation because I'm going to be trying something new here in just a minute. Now, what I've been using on most of my builds here is this is just regular old house insulation. You can buy a big roll of it at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever your local hardware store is. And it varies in price depending on the brand you get. But you can get a roll of it for about $12. And it will last you for quite a few projects. And this works really, really good for the plastic boxes. But a problem arose when I was getting ready to do my Mega Boom box. And let me show you what we have here. This is the Mega Boom Box that I'm going to be doing. And the problem is, inside this box, there's going to be a lot going on. 
I'm going to have the power supply mounted down here. The radio is going to come through here. The power supply is going to be giving off heat. I'm going to have the amplifier over here with a fan built onto it over here. That's going to be giving off heat. So I'm going to put a port tube on the back to get rid of some of the heat. But again, I have all these hard surfaces in here. But the problem is, if I start packing all this insulation in here, it's going to trap all the heat in this box, and I can't pack the insulation around these components that are giving off heat. It's going to smother them, and they're going to overheat. But I don't want to have all these hard surfaces, so I started thinking, what am I going to do? So, I was thinking about the dyno mat that I've seen some of the guys use to go ahead and line the uh, metal ammo boxes that you see there. And they do that to cut down the vibration and also add some insulation. The problem is Dynomat is very expensive. It's about $30 a sheet. And to do a box like this, it might cost me as much as $60 in Dynomat just to line the hole inside of this box. It's very sticky. It's hard to cut around your speakers. And because uh, once you have to line everything first, then you got to cut out your components and it sticks to your saw blades. And I wasn't real happy with it when I decided to use it. So let me show you what I'm thinking about using. Let me move this out of the way temporarily. And I'll show you in a second what I'm going to do with that. I found this uh, half inch foam insulation here. And I cut a piece out of it right here, but it comes in a 4 by 8 sheet, same size as a sheet of plywood. And it's got this foil back on one side here. And uh, I assume that's to, uh, when you put this on your house, it reflects the heat back into the house because you put it on your house like this and I guess it keeps the, the heat inside the house or the air reflecting it back in. It's very lightweight. You can see it's about a half inch thick. It comes in different thicknesses. Uh, but I was looking at this and this is almost the exact same foam insulation that's inside that cooler. And I thought, well I could just line the box with this. And then what I can do is wherever a component's going to be, let's say I'm going to put the amplifier right here, I can just cut out this square right here. What I'm thinking about doing is taking a piece of a 2x4 piece of wood and gluing that to the inside of the box and then screwing down my amplifier to that and then having this around it so now the amplifier can still breathe. So what you do is I already cut this one to size and let me go ahead and show you how it's going to work right here and let me open it up and uh, let me see if you can see this right here. It's just going to slide right in there like that. Let me push it down in here. And as you can see, it fits perfectly right in there. And I can even line the floor of it. I can cut the hole out from my power supply. I can cut it around the radio, and we're going to have four speakers. I'm even going to try to do the roof up here. I haven't decided yet. I'd like to if I can. It's going to be kind of hard cutting around this right here, so I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that or not, because I'm going to have 6 by 9s up here at the top. If you can see, that just that fits in there perfectly. It's not too thick. And if you line the entire side of the box, that should absorb the sound. So we're going to give that a try and uh, see what happens. And if I'm successful, I'm planning on doing a metal ammunition box after I get the Mega Boom box done. And um, I'm thinking about trying this insulation now on that metal ammo box instead of using the uh, fluffy stuff. And I might still go with that. I don't know yet. We're going to just see how this works out. But if you have a really large build or maybe your build's out of wood, a big wooden box, I don't know how this would work with uh, subwoofers. You guys would have to give it a try. Again, it doesn't weigh a thing. And it comes in a 4 by 8 sheet. And you just cut it. I use just a regular straight, straight knife. Uh, box cutter to, uh, to cut it, and it came out really, really good. So, like I said, you guys don't be afraid to try to put some insulation in your project. Um, like I said you can use the matte stuff here. Heck, go up in your attic and take a handful of it. Just don't tell your wife you're done it; she might get mad at you. And uh, I tried this uh, rigid insulation uh, foam, and it comes in different sizes. Like again, I'm, I'm going to try the half inch size first and see how it works. If not, I may have to go up to a bigger size, but we're just going to see how it goes. And again, all you have to do is when you're building is just kind of lay it up inside and uh, trace out your hole for your speaker. Go ahead and cut it out. And um, hopefully it'll work really good. So anyway, guys, give me just a minute. I'm going to give you an update on the Mega Boombox. So I'll be right back.
Okay guys, I'm back and I just wanted to show you guys a little sneak preview of what's going in the Mega Boom box and of course refresh your memory here. Let's pull the camera back a little, pull this back a little bit. Here's the Mega Boom box. If I can't even see the whole thing, the camera. This is a big 27 inch toolbox. We're going to be putting some 6x9, 6.5s. Let me show you the radio that's going to be going right here. Move this down here. We have a Pioneer FHX730BS. I don't like the BS sound. This is no BS. Trust me. This thing is awesome. It's a double did Pioneer radio. It's got Bluetooth. It's got USB connectors, auxiliary connectors, remote control, Spotify, all kinds of awesome stuff. Sirius XM ready. It's an amazing, amazing radio. And this is going to be the crown jewel on the Mega Boom box, and I can't wait to hook it up. So that's the radio we're going to be using. And let me show you the speakers we're going to be using. We have, uh, they put the sticker right there in the front here. We've got some 300 watt peak, uh, six and a half inch kicker speakers are going to be going in the front. And I will be custom painting the grills. And these are going to be really awesome. These are going to be on either side of the radio. And going on the lid, we're going to have these kicker 450 watt 6x9 inch speakers. And these are going to go on either side of the lid. And I got the same grill style to match the other ones. And again, I'm going to be custom painting the grills. And I think it's going to look absolutely amazing and I can't wait to get it done. Let me show you what else is going to be going into it. Right here we have a still in the plastic. I don't know if you can see it with a reflection here. This is a 400 watt 4 channel amplifier. So 100 watts per channel going to each speaker. And this is going to be mounted inside the box as well. And to run everything, I'll show you what else we're going to be putting in here. We're going to have a, let me get it open here. This is a 12 volt power supply. It takes 110 volts and turns it into 12 volt DC for the radio. So we're going to have an amplifier, I mean, no, excuse me, we're going to have the power supply and we're going to have batteries inside. Now one thing I'm going to show you guys how to do in my next couple of videos is you cannot have the, the power supply and the batteries hooked together on the same circuit. What's going to happen is the power supply will try to charge the batteries and this is not a battery charger. It's not designed for that and you will burn up your power supply and you will not have a good day. Now you can eliminate this one of two ways. You can have a manual switch where you can switch from battery power to power supply power, but that's kind of a pain. So what I want to do is I want to install a relay, and I'll show you that right here. This is a 14 pin relay, and what it does is you're going to hook up the batteries coming in one side and the power supply on the other. Now what's going to happen is the battery is going to come in on a line called normally closed. And that means that when this relay is not activated, the battery power will come in one side of the relay and go to the radio. Now, when the power supply turns on, it's going to turn on the relay. And what's going to happen is when the relay activates, it's going to open that circuit where the batteries are and disconnect the batteries from the circuit. And it's going to close the circuit, taking power from the power supply to the radio. So now the radio will be automatically running off the power supply and the batteries will be disconnected. And the batteries and the power supply will never touch each other even though they're both powering the radio. And what's going to happen is when you turn off the power supply, this, the relay is going to turn off and automatically disconnect the power supply and automatically reconnect the batteries. It's all going to be automatic through this little relay right here. Now it's going to be really, really cool, and I'm going to show you guys in a future video how to wire this circuit up to put it in one of your projects. Matter of fact, I'm going to be installing one of these 
in my toolbox project the last video you just saw because right now I'm using a manual switch and I'd like to go ahead and rewire it for an automatic switch. It would just be a whole lot easier to do than having to flip a switch. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm totally excited about the Mega Boom Box. We're going to be starting this project uh, this week. Uh, my wife is having surgery, so please keep her in your prayers. And once she comes home and everything slows down a little bit, I'm going to start working on the Mega Boom Box project. I've just got out all the parts. I'm still waiting for the batteries to come in. They're going to be here soon. But I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the holes since I have the speakers and the radio and everything. It's going to take me a couple of weeks to probably get it finished. But once I get it finished, I'll be sure to show you guys a complete video of how it's done. And after that, we might start working on the ammo boxes again. So thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, right here at the bottom of the screen, you can see my link to my Facebook page, I Love All Things Radio. If you have a question for me, you'd like to talk to me about building your own radio, if you guys want me to build one for you, that's the best way to talk to me. I mean, I appreciate you talking to me in the comments, but it's hard to go back and forth in the comments. So if you're on Facebook, look me up on I Love All Things Radio. My name is Philip Falmsby, and I'd love to talk with you and help you out with your own build, or if you'd like me to build you one, I have several people on the page that are happy with radios I, I built for them. If you've seen the Air Force box, the Buffalo Bills, the Taylor Swift, the Zombie box, these all belong to my customers that I built. They're very, very happy with them. So thanks you guys for watching. Um, I'll say, I'll tell Duke you said hi. He's around here somewhere. And y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll tell you what, let me see if I can find Duke real quick. Come here, Duke. All right, there's Duke. Everybody loves Duke. Let's step back a little bit. He was he was asleep, so we just woke him up. So everybody say hi, Duke. He's the coolest cat in Texas, and he loves the camera. So he's kind of half asleep right now, so he's kind of out of it. But for Duke, my name is Phil, DIY Boomboxes in Texas. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.